Good afternoon. I'm Chris Somerville. I'm the CEO of the Schizophrenia Society of Canada, as well as representing the 10 provincial schizophrenia societies across Canada. While mental health organizations in Canada often support one another on fundamental issues, there are certain occasions where building a strong working alliance is of vital importance. And indeed, this is one of them. Nine national mental health organizations have come together to inform and educate the federal government and Canadians on the impact of Bill C-54, the Not Criminally Responsible Reform Act. On a positive note, Bill C-54 includes increased victims' involvement by ensuring that they are specifically considered when decisions are being made about accused persons found not criminally responsible, ensuring that they are notified when a not criminally responsible accused is discharged and allowing non-communications orders between a not criminally responsible accused and the victim. The mental health community wholeheartedly supports these amendments. Our hearts go out to all individuals who have been affected by a serious crime, including the victims, their families, and also, we must not forget, the families of the individuals who committed the offense. We understand the need to protect Canadians from individuals who commit violent crimes. However, this bill, as it is currently written, will not do this. What this bill has done is to tell Canadians that they should be afraid of people living with a mental illness. Fearing people living with mental illness will only set us back. As Dr. Patrick Bailey has stated, a psychologist and a lawyer states, your chances of being killed by lightning is greater than being killed by a person living with psychosis or schizophrenia. Furthermore, Bill C-54 includes too many components that demonstrate a lack of understanding of mental illness. A lack of understanding of mental illness. For example, the bill establishes a high-risk category based on the brutality of the crime and yet there is no direct correlation between the seriousness of the crime and either the likelihood of the offender to reoffend, or his or her ability to improve his or her mental state. There is no scientific evidence for that. The lack of understanding of mental illness is also evident in the bill and areas that tighten the criteria of progress and release of individuals found not criminally responsible. People living with mental illness should be reintegrated into society at the most appropriate time as deemed by their professional medical team. Further detaining these individuals or restricting their ability to improve their mental health through tools such as escorted visits will lessen their ability to successfully reintegrate into society. The last thing we want, the very last thing we want, is for people to be diverted into jails and prisons rather than receiving the mental health care they need. Canadians need to be informed. Canadians need to be educated on the system. What is involved in a patient's release? What measures are now in place to help them from committing another crime? and indeed how the review board system actually works and its process. That's just to name a few things. So educating and understanding is the only way we're going to reduce stigma. Education and understanding is the only way we're going to reduce stigma and reducing stigma and providing access to early treatment will allow these individuals to seek help before a possible crime is committed. Thank you, Chris. Um, good afternoon. My name is Peter Coleridge, and I'm the national CEO of the Canadian Mental Health Association. Uh, CMHA has been providing an array of programs and services, both mental health and mental illness, uh, since 1918, and we, we are doing that in hundreds of communities across the uh, country. And as a, a significant component of the mental health community, working with Chris and, and other organizations, we've made great strides over the last decade in, in terms of reducing the stigma associated with mental illness. 
And CMHA looks forward to continuing this progress with the entire mental health community, other sectors, including the justice sector, and in particular, the federal government and its establish of, establishment of the Mental Health Commission of Canada, uh, one of whose priorities is to help the um, Canadian society reduce stigma related to pe uh, regarding people with mental illness. CMHA is also very concerned that the proposed changes to the criminal code will neg negatively impact the lives of, of people who uh, are found NCR accused and also more broadly uh, in terms of people who have mental health problems across Canada. We need to strike a, a better balance between the needs of both the victims of crime and those NCR accused. The proposed changes, as Chris has noted, are, are do opposite that. They're going to uh, fuel stigma and, and tell Canadians that they need to be afraid of people with mental illness. And so all the, the progress we, we've made is now being undermined. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the elements of the bill are not evidence-based and they're not going to result in the changes that Canadians and victims would like to see from such a bill. Um, this is a, a really important issue and, and one that we should not rush. Uh, we feel the federal government should be consulting with the forensic system, the broader mental health community and system, justice sector, and, and uh, many others to fully understand and assess the, the impacts. We need to also work um, to improve society's understanding of what it means to be uh, found NCR accused and what it means to live with a mental illness or a mental health problem. We also need to work, as Chris has mentioned, on the process for review uh, for people who are uh, found NCR accused. And we also need to evaluate any proposed changes to the criminal code as it relates to uh, NCR accused. Chris spoke about education um, and, and um, the importance of, of improving understanding. And so societal myth number one people with mental illness are violent. And the fact is that people with mental illness are more likely to be victims of violence than any other group in our society. And yet, because of the myths out there, the types of changes that are being proposed in this bill are, are moving forward. Societal myth number two, people with mental illness commit more crimes. Fact is that the vast majority of people with uh, mental illness never commit crimes, let alone serious crimes. The repeat offense rate of individuals found not criminally responsible due to mental disorder are much lower than the rates among individuals found guilty of crime. We also uh, need to ensure that supports are in place uh, in terms of reintegration back into the community. We know that early assessment, appropriate treatment, and community program have been proven to help people reintegrate after being found NCR accused. And so we're all eager um, to discuss how we can work together to improve the public safety goals while at the same time meeting the needs of the not criminally responsible and also not fueling the stigma and discrimination that, that so many in our society feel because of, of their struggles with mental health problems. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Dr. Paul Federoff of the Canadian Psychiatric Association and president of the Canadian Academy of Psychiatry and the Law. I work at the University of Ottawa and I'm a practicing psychiatrist at the Royal. When debating this issue in the bill, many often discuss striking a balance between the needs and rights of both victims of crime and those found not criminally responsible on account of mental disorder. These discussions are often misguided. The solution is not about giving up certain rights and needs of people with mental illness in order to provide greater ones to the victims. It's about understanding mental illness and providing the tools and resources to ensure the crime is never committed in the first place and will never occur again. This is not an issue of give or take, but rather one of working together. The mental health com uh, community was not part of the creation of Bill C-54. Today, during Mental Health Week, we publicly offer not only to work with the government in creating an effective bill, but, all, but to also work with victims groups. We are confident that Canadians expect their government to work with the mental health community in crafting a bill that effectively and fairly deals with people 
with mental disorders in a way that serves everyone's interests. Thank you, and we'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Anybody among you consulted <coughs> in bills of C-54 at all? Or do you know if anybody among the organization of mental health were? Uh, no, none, as far as we know, no mental health organizations were consulted at any time. All they seem to have to do is, is raise the name of Vince Lee or a Schoenborn, uh, and that uh, they essentially think they've won the debate. Uh, since ne neither of those men or some of the others that have been cited were actually under the NCR system, can you speak to whether those cases uh, should be used in any way to, to, to model an NCR system? Well, um, my comment on that is that you are correct. This bill would not have prevented any of those very unfortunate crimes. Uh, further, um, because the bill addresses a very select group of mentally ill people who are not criminally responsible, and I should say that most people with mental illness are not violent, and most people who are violent are not mentally ill, this bill will do virtually nothing to reduce the crime rate. If it's such a small number, why are you that worried? Well, um, I think uh, uh, one of our first jobs is to advocate for our patients. And uh, patients with severe mental illness um, who are brought before the courts, uh, we are worried are going to be diverted into jails rather than into psychiatric care uh, and mental health care that they need. Um, the effect, the, uh, I'm sure the unintended effect of the bill will be to uh, put a greater burden on the resources that are already in existence and we're concerned may lead to a backlog in terms of people being assessed and uh, we're worried will result in more people being in jail who should be uh, receiving care. Are there any this yeah, let, let me also add that a major concern of the Schizophrenia Societies of Canada is the social prejudice that is so associated with this bill, how it was announced, how it has been written. And so there it all, therefore it automatically fuels into the stereotype that if you have a mental illness, you're going to be violent. If there had been disclaimers to the bill, for example, 97% of people with mental illness do not commit a crime. Recidivism rates for people once released from a forensic mental health system in Ontario Recidivism rates are only 7.5%. When you compare that to the federal correction system, which is 45%, it's a huge difference. And it's not easy to get NCR. And most people NCR deemed it's not for homicide, assault, violent assault. And that, that percentage is, is, is less than 1%. And so this bill, unfortunately, and the way it's been cast, uh, really does stigmatize a uh, 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 millions of Canadians and I can say just from a personal level working with people with lived experience of schizophrenia and um, their families um, they're victims of that social prejudice and uh, they go through a, a lot of devastation and some people say you know living with the the, the, the the stigma that Peter talked about is worse than living with the illness itself by less than one percent are violent criminals? Are According violent to acts? the Center for Addictions and Mental Health, Canada's largest uh, mental health uh, uh, hospital, uh, at least in Ontario, uh, that's the figures. And the, the, the doctor may comment on it. Is there any parts of this bill that you could proceed back in? What would you use if you work with the government on a better bill? What would you want to see in that, in that particular bill? Well, um, we uh, certainly support, I think, what is the intent of the bill, which is to uh, support victims and uh, victims' rights. And there, is, there are parts of the bill that deal with, for example, victim notification, uh, which we think is, uh, is reasonable and justifiable. Okay. And what would you like to see in a bill that, that you would help them with? Well, um, the, the legislation as it currently exists is, is probably closer to the ideal. Uh, there are a number of aspects in the current uh, bill that, that have uh, been changed. For example, uh, the um, law 
as it deals with the severely mentally ill has been found constitutional because it uh, uh, restricts the restriction of custody uh, to be the least onerous and least restrictive. The new legislation removes that phrase, meaning that uh, there is a danger that people with severe mental illness may receive a punishment which is greater than people without mental illness would receive. Correct. Do you have any idea of how many people are uh, recognized NCR, non criminally responsible, in a year? Do we have any kind of bald figure? Um, in Canada last year, there were 5,000 dispositions. Uh, those are people that are followed by review boards across Canada. Um, and uh, every year there are actually increasing numbers of people that are, are added to the uh, number that are followed by review boards. So there's about 5,000 people in facilities followed by review boards right now? Currently, yes. In terms of the stigma uh, for Somerville, um, I mean, the, I could be wrong, my, my reading is that the intent of the bill is to you know, change the potential for, for punishment for people who are found not uh, criminally responsible. How is that a commentary on all people with mental illness? Where is this concern uh, for the stigma coming from? I mean, it's not a, a social commentary on all people with mental illness. It's talking about, I mean, it may be less than 1% who do commit violent crimes, but the bill is to deal specifically with that, whatever percentage it is, that do commit violent crimes. So, you know, where does this, is this just a, like, the, the constant concern for the stigma or, or I I feel strongly and I, and I think the the other members of our coalition feel strongly that that it is uh, a broader um, social implication here it's not just the the group of people uh, affected by the bill it has broader ripple effects language and labels and processes and legislation and policy uh, are what have led to in Canada and other jurisdictions uh, people with mental illness uh, feeling uh, a lot of shame and, and uh, not accessing services. Uh, and so this bill is specific to the NCR accused, but it absolutely has broader implications for the work that we've all been doing in Canada for, for decades. Uh, so I, I, while your questions focus in on you know, numbers and, and this specific group, it does have much broader implications uh, because of the impact on discrimination and stigma. Even in your press release, you say that none of you actually want these violent offenders to be out on the street. That's correct. So, I mean, so what gives? Like, where, where is that balance between not stigmatizing against violent, what? mentally ill criminals and punishing them? Yeah. Well, I think there's language in the bill uh, that, that provide labels that fuel stigma. And without the language, the current criminal code and legislation would achieve what it's achieving. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's some of the, the changes are, are not necessary to continue to, to achieve to strike that balance between public safety and, and not fueling stigma. Can it be worded more nicely? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> more than that. <laughs> well, uh, I think one of the uh, phrases that he's probably referring to is the designation of some offenders as being high-risk offenders. Um, the concern is that the designation will be made not on the basis of the severity of the mental illness uh, or on true risk, but on the basis of the what they call brutality of the crime, so that we are changing legislation which is intended to respect the fact that people who commit crimes without knowing what they are doing, not without the intention to commit crimes, uh, they are a group that, that most civilizations agree should not be punished in the way that people who intentionally commit crimes. Uh, this legislation will change this back to them being punished on the basis of the crime rather than um, put into facilities that will help to correct the mental illness that caused the crime in the first place. Be cured? And I mean, if someone is committing a crime not realizing that it's wrong, isn't that more dangerous than someone who, say, commits a crime in a, an act of passion? What's more dangerous is taking a person who commits a crime due to a mental illness and not treating them. What happened? Let me follow through. The Schizophrenia Society of Canada is very adamant about this value. Mental illnesses are treatable. We have the best science today to do that. 
And furthermore, recovery is possible in terms of being able to live beyond the limitations of mental illness with the various mental health supports and options. And so, as Peter said, language is important. I do not consider these people that are in CR as criminals. They did not do what they did with a criminal mind. It was mental illness. And so, because you get the best mental health services that I know of in a forensic mental health system. And so, as they recover, as they get better, and they realize how they need to take care of their health, and, and most of them will suffer with tremendous guilt, understandably, for the rest of their life, knowing what they did. I know this by talking with people who are in CR. And so language is important. Uh, uh, the fact that, um, um, you know, we have effective ways to help people to reintegrate into society successfully. And again, the recidivism rate, that is the reoffending re rate, is, is so low, it tells us that the current review board system is, in fact, working. But, sorry, you talked about unintended consequences. Other than stigma, one was more people going to jail. Can you expand on that point? How, will this, could this bill lead to more mentally ill people in prisons? Um, when people are uh, before the courts having committed a crime, uh, there are some options that their lawyers have. And... Um, we're concerned that some lawyers will advise their clients that uh, rather than pursue an NCR defense, that they will choose to uh, be tried through the regular criminal uh, court and uh, as a result will go to jail rather than into facilities in which they would receive treatment. Because the penalty may be less severe. Speak with the government today. You're here today. Have you tried to meet the Minister of Health, the Minister of Justice, the Public Safety? Anybody? Yes, the uh, we we have made uh, attempts to, to meet uh, with them. So far, we've not been successful. And, and various of our coalition members have met with many uh, MPs and 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 senators, and uh, we've met with the office of the Federal Minister of Justice. What we wished is that, along with the Mental Health Commission itself, uh, that they had, had worked collaboratively and, and in a con con consultative process with us in the very beginning, and we wouldn't have the flaws that are in this bill. So what we're saying now is, okay, let's see if we can work together to correct the flaws that are in the bill and to achieve the desired outcomes that benefit Canadians uh, victims' families, as well as families of those uh, who are in CR deemed. And did the worst start from scratch? We're, we're asking to be engaged with the process that's currently underway. And, and certainly, uh, apparently, one of the ways to do that is through amendments or through the regulation process. There's common things that we seem to hear, especially from you know, people writing in after we write about these issues is that they don't want someone who's NCR released because then they stop taking their medication and then they go back to where they were before. What assurances does the system have that that doesn't happen? Well, the, um, you've actually uh, allowed me to make a comment on the previous question, which is that this legislation appears to have arisen uh, to fix a problem that doesn't exist. Uh, the review boards across Canada have been... Uh, extremely um, effective in preventing exactly that problem that, that you've suggested. Um, paradoxically, the new legislation will make it harder to ensure uh, that uh, patients don't drop out of treatment. And the reason is because the new legislation proposes that individuals who are designated as high risk uh, not be allowed to leave the hospital grounds unescorted. And in the current system, uh, there is a progression of increasing privileges so that individuals, as they recover and are reintegrated into the community, are given increasing levels of, of freedom that can be monitored in order to ensure that they do follow treatment and that they uh, show no signs of relapse. But then what happens in, say, two, three years down the line if they don't want to take their medication anymore? Well, that's, that's a, a, an ongoing concern that this legislation will do nothing to address. 
addresses that is what I'm trying to get at. Absolutely. The, um, uh, the review board system allows for people to be held in custody, to be released on conditions, uh, which can be quite extensive, uh, or to eventually have absolute discharge. But it's only when people are shown uh, in which there's no proof that they continue to be a danger that they receive an absolute discharge. Let me make a comment about the thing that people say, well, how do we make sure that people take their medication? It is more than medication. It's dealing with unresolved trauma issues. It's dealing with how you deal with stress. It's building good mental health. The opposite of mental illness is not mental health. The opposite of mental illness is no mental illness. And then you can have positive mental health or negative mental health. Most of the people I know with schizophrenia have positive mental health. And so again, even how we're using language here today, it, it's, it's if you know this particular group of people here will never get well or get better and so forth, and that's all rooted in the mythologies that, that, that Peter talked about. 